Good morning, everybody. I'm Cathy Garlick. Um, I'm Senior Midwife and Manager within the local maternity system in Hereford and Worcester. As Andrew said, it's fantastic to see you all here this morning, so welcome, and I hope you really enjoy the day. So we thought we'd just start with a bit of an overview of the national picture and to sort of understand why we're here and what we're meant to be looking at. And I'm sure some of this is revision for everybody. So just to give you the context, in 2016, um, the National Maternity Strategy Better Births was launched, followed very quickly by Saving Babies' Lives. And then again in 2016, we had the Maternity and Neonatal Safety Collaborative. And for those of you that are not deeply steeped in this, Worcestershire and Herefordshire enter the Safety Collaborative next week. So we're in the third wave. So this has been running for two years nationally. We wanted to go into the second wave, but were placed into the third wave. And the reason for that, and I think it's quite important that we understand that, is both maternity units back in 15 were both rated by the CQC as inadequate. Now, we're both out of that, both Herefordshire and Worcestershire, but consequently we were placed in year three of the Safety Collaborative. So we start as from next week with that. And there were some people in the room today who were at the meeting yesterday in London around that. At the same time, the National Maternity and Neonatal Transformation Board was established and our chair is Sarah Jane Marsh. So I'm sure a lot of you know Sarah Jane from the um, Birmingham Women's and Children's. Um, and that was brought together really to bring everything together on that. So then in 17, the um, STP, so the um, Sustainability and Transformation Partnership Plan, sorry, um, had said we had to have LMSs in place by January 17. And then the Secretary of State very kindly gave us some targets that we all have to achieve, and they are very ambitious. So based on 2010 data, we needed to deliver a 50% reduction in stillbirths, neonatal deaths, maternal deaths, and neonatal brain injury. Now, originally it was 2030. It was then reduced to 2025, just to make it a little bit more challenging for us. Then in November 17, there was some further targets added to the bundle for us to think about. And that was to reduce smoking at delivery to 6% by 2020 and a reduction in preterm births, again to 6% by 2022. At the same time, the CNST um, rebate was launched, and that's very much about bringing all these elements of safety together and encouraging trust to participate and to meet those standards. And just for information, at coffee or at lunch, there are some charts at the back just to show where we have got to at the end of the second year of this program. So it gives the picture across Herefordshire and Worcestershire. There's some quite interesting data there, so please feel free to have a look at that. 2018, so it doesn't stop. It's not like they've launched this and gone away. The things keep coming. It's the gift that keeps giving. The neonatal critical care review um, and the critical care capacity was undertaken nationally. And it also suggested some pathways for neonatal care. And at the same time, we had the first evaluation of the implementation of Saving Babies Lives Care Bundle from the early adopters. And that's a really interesting document for those of you that haven't had a look at it. Then in 2019, we're not doing bad because we're only nearly into April, the NHS 10-year plan was launched. And again, for those of you that haven't looked, it's really exciting. There is actually a maternity, children and young people's chapter, a whole chapter about everything we do. So I would encourage you to look at that. CNST version 2 has been launched and Saving Babies Lives version 2 has been launched. So huge amount of things. Just a bit of, of revision, really. Um, it's quite interesting when you talk to people. People aren't always sure, staff aren't always sure 
what comes from what report. So we've just listed out there some of the key elements that came from better births and saving babies' lives. But it just gives you the context of what the reports were recommending. You move on. Safety champions. Every provider of maternity and newborn care was asked to have a safety champion. And that safety champion should be at board level within the organisation. So a question for you. Who's the maternity safety champion at Worcester Acute? Yeah, brilliant. And do you know who the neonatal safety champion is? It's interesting. That's also Vicky at the Trust. But there should also be local levels of safety champions. So who's your maternity safety champion within the directorate? And Caitlin, yeah. It's really important that you know who these people are. These are your local safety champions. Now, unfortunately, we haven't got a nominated neonatal safety champion yet at Worcester, but we need to make sure that happens. So, our LMS, are you all aware of the local maternity system and what it is? Yeah? That's great. So we just wanted to highlight why we think we're here. So when we first started two years ago, over two years ago, we looked at the public health data. And actually, we were really, really shocked about our public health data. So we had, at the time, in 2016, a smoking rate of 13% at booking. The national rate at the time was 11.7. So we were a national outlier. Obesity rates were over 30% at booking. Again, we were a national outlier. Prematurity rates at the time were 9.1% versus a 7.8% national picture. And we had a higher than average stillbirth and neonatal death rate. So again, a national outlier. That was actually quite stark and very scary for us. And at the time, we had a lower than national average breastfeeding rate. So some really scary messages there, we felt, and things that we really needed to look at. I'm sorry if you can't... Can you see that slide reasonably well? So just to show where we thought we were, 17 babies every day die nationally. That's a, that's a really scary figure and a really quite frightening figure for me. So we then looked at our local rates and based on what we thought would happen with the births and how we felt the bookings and deliveries were going across, and this is for the whole of Herefordshire and Worcestershire, it's not one trust, it's across the, the whole patch. We looked at our stillbirths and neonatal deaths and in 2050 our baseline data said we had 50 deaths a year in that year. So in red, we have our trajectories of what we need to do until 2021 to meet that ambition of a 50% reduction. Now, I'm pleased to say for this year, we needed to be below 44. At the end of January, we were at 33. Now, we can't rest on our laurels. We've still got a huge amount of work still to do to get us to the 50% reduction. Smoking. This is the biggest thing that we need to think about in terms of the behaviour that will change outcomes for mums and babies. Now, this is actually Hereford. So this is quarter three of the current year, current financial year. So they are currently... Hereford CCG, so this is every woman within that CCG area, not necessarily hospital. Yeah? So this is population data. They have still got a rate of 13.9 in Herefordshire. National is 10.5. So within Worcestershire, so just so you're aware, we have three CCGs. So we've got three lots of data. 
So for Wire Forest, which is the Kidderminster area, we are still sitting at 14.1%. That is incredibly scary number, I feel. And again, again, 10.5. Redditch and Bromsgrove is sitting at 11.2. And finally, Worcester is sitting at 10.6. So I think that very clearly identifies that we have still got a huge mountain to climb in terms of smoking cessation. So why do we need the Saving Babies Lives Care Bundle? Infant mortality rates for babies born to teenage mothers is 44% higher than mothers aged 20 to 39. Low birth, birth weight babies are 27 times more likely to die before the age of one for babies born of a normal birth weight. Infant mortality rates for babies of mother born within um, Caribbean is almost twice for women in the UK. And babies born to mother from the routine and manual groups have a 4%, uh, sorry, times four higher infant mortality rate than those mothers who are in higher managerial professional groups. Really quite stark data there. So why have we got a local maternity system? Might be a question that you're all thinking. So the local maternity systems were conceived to bring together the deliverables within the reports that we've just talked about, um, which are obviously designed to improve the outcomes for mums and babies. And the only way to achieve these ambitions, and they are ambitions, but they are challenging targets, shall we say, is to work together, not as individual organisations, but as a system. And I think some of the successes that we've had to date within the, this LMS, within Herefordshire and Worcestershire LMS, is because we have worked together. And actually, it's a real privilege to sit around that board table and see the organisations working collaboratively, breaking down barriers, and not saying, well, I can't do that because that's yours. It's how can we do this together? And looking at those figures, it's very, very clear to me why we need to do this and why we're all here today, I hope. Thank you.